Supercars. It's something that we may or may not have just bought for the channel, but they're the Coupe de Gras, the pick of the litter. Another analogy about supercars being the number one choice. You get the point though. We all love supercars and they are the baseline of performance in our automotive world. Unfortunately, a lot of newer supercars are, well, they're out of reach, especially when you uh, consider our meager budgets. But thankfully, there's something called the used car market, where several gems can be found when using the ideal car strategies, which is how we bought our supercar. And they'll make your supercar ownership dreams a reality. So let's dive into this list of supercars that you can buy today for insanely cheap. So ready, buckle up, let's go. Hey guys, real quick, I know we're talking about cheap supercars that are fast, but what if I told you there was a truck that was faster and you can win it? Yeah, we're teaming up with Charity Stars and Charity Stars is going to be giving away a brand new 2021 Dodge Ram TRX. Yes, with that 6.2 liter supercharged engine, pumping out a mind-boggling 702 horsepower. And that'll thrust you from zero to 60 in just 3.7 seconds, which is downright insane for a pickup with a ton of pickup. So make sure you check with your doctor to confirm that your heart can handle that kind of power because this truck, well, it can handle any terrain without sacrificing any comfort. Now, that is not all because if you win, you also get $10,000 cash in your pocket to help pay for taxes and everything else you need to start your adventures in this ideal truck. And your entry is gonna benefit globalgiving.org, a charity that connects nonprofits, donors, and companies in nearly every country in the world to accelerate community-led change. Now, because I love you, go visit www.charitystars.com ideal to enter and use coupon code IDEAL at checkout to get 100 free entries on your purchase. Not only are you helping a great cause, but you're giving yourself a chance to win real big. So go to charitystars.com slash ideal down in the description and support the sponsors that support us. Now back to the show. Our first choice is going to come as no surprise. It's really almost become the Miata of the supercar world. It can take it to nearly any other supercar on this list and it does it while being comfortable enough to drive home from the track after you set track records. Yes, we're talking about the Nissan GTR. And yeah, when the GTR first came out, it was classed as a supercar due to its performance and purpose. As your mom says, not all supercars have to be exotic. They just have to be on par or superior in performance of other supercars. That is the definition of a GTR. Now, I know you're already saying that this was too obvious of a choice, and I get it, but you just can't make a budget supercar list without a GTR. It's really the quintessential supercar killer that's been owning Italian alternatives since 2008. And that's because it's got a twin turbo V6, all wheel drive and up to 600 horsepower on tap. It's literally laughable how much performance you get for the money. Speaking of monies, well, new models start at roughly 115,000 bucks. And what you get is a brand new premium trim GTR straight from Nissan. And honestly, that's already in the budget-friendly supercar pricing considering that it's brand new without even looking used yet. So what if you were to look at used examples? Well, they're easily found for under six figures. I mean, what more? <laughs> can you really ask for? And the one that we found is this 13 black edition with just over 49,000 miles on it. And yes, normally miles like this would probably raise a couple red flags, but it's a Nissan, it's a GTR. It's bulletproof pretty much. I mean, there's really not much to worry about. And that's because at its heart, the GTR has the same V6 that's been powering several models from both Nissan's and Infiniti's lineups. So forget what people say. They'll be saying that at the starting line after you, uh, leave them in the dust. So the Nissan GTR is a Miata of the supercar world. It's the safe choice, but what if you want something a little bit more adventurous? Well, real quick, before we get into our next pick, I wanna share with you guys how you can get yourself into a GTR's driver's seat. Yes, like actually own it, or really any other supercar that's on this list. And it's called the 
ideal car strategies. And the sooner you start using them, the quicker you're gonna climb the ladder. And a picture's worth a thousand words. So here is you in a Miata and your friend in a Miata. And in two years, you're driving a McLaren, a GTR, or any other supercar because you know how to find the best deals, buy like a pro, and continue to level up with each consecutive purchase. And the best part, because, well, I teach you the secrets of financing, you can do all this with little to no money out of your own pocket. Heck, I'm living proof that this actually works. And there's hundreds of other members that have already joined and started working towards their first supercar. So, if you're like me, you're gonna be buying cars for the rest of your life. So there's no better time than now to start learning how to buy a car the right way. So to see if it's for you, click the link up here or down in the description and check out my free webinar. It's seven secrets to make money enjoying your dream car. And it's well worth the price of admission, free. And if you like what you see, well then there's a special offer going on right now so you can join the other members inside the Ideal Car Strategies group, which the strategies definitely work with the GTR if you wanna buy one in the near future, but but it actually does not work with the next car we're gonna talk about. Because our next car has a uh, much more, shall we say, liberal definition of reliable, and surprise, surprise, it's uh, Italian. The thing is emptier than your soul. Okay, let me ask you a question. Do you want a front engine supercar with a Ferrari V8? Well then, you definitely want the Gran Turismo. The gold chain and chest hair, they're optional. And the Gran Turismo is one of the ultimate GT cars available right now with a 4.7 liter V8 up front, drive going to the rear wheels, and a smooth automatic transmission. The Gran Turismo is the perfect example of why GT cars are just so good. But just because it's a good cruiser doesn't mean that you have to sacrifice performance. Nimble handling and 454 horsepower guarantee plenty of punching power. Plus, <laughs> yeah, that V8 is something else. Now, they would never admit that Ferrari definitely donated some parts, but this is a sweet, sweet engine. And that valved exhaust means spine tingling sounds that are better than anything you've ever heard in your life. And that's every time you drive. But we have to mention the ugly reality of the Maserati's reliability. There aren't really too many redeeming qualities. Do a search on YouTube and you'll find plenty of vlogs going over the challenges of owning one. But that's all part of the fun, right? Right, right, right? But all things considered, minus the slight issues of reliability, the Gran Turismo is actually an amazing package all for less than 70K. There are plenty of them on the market and they will pretty much blow your socks off, unless you're wearing sandals. I don't know what else to do with it. Now, the Gran Turismo comes with everything that we've listed, no matter the trim. So if you want some racious Italian fun and a great weekend cruiser, look no further than the Gran Turismo. Now, let's go from one Italian to another. This one is from a different breed, being much more supercar than a GT. And well, it's an angry bull that can be had for shockingly cheap. Now the Lamborghini Gallardo was the little brother in the Lambo family. It was the first small Lambo in a while and one of the first models that Lambo made under Audi's ownership. And one of its selling points was that naturally aspirated 5.2 liter V10 pushing out 520 horsepower in top spec. I think that we really need to take a step back and take this in. This is an Italian V10 supercar on a budget car list. It really doesn't get any better than this. Plus, all wheel drive means that you won't get left stuck in the snow. So go hit the mountains in the winter. And if you happen to live in an area that experiences all four seasons, well, this might be the perfect budget supercar daily driver. And that's not all the good news. Let's keep it coming. Because with the Gallardo, it was built when the Italian car company was owned by Audi. So the stuff in the car actually works. You know, there's real air conditioning and plenty of room inside for people to drive and live in. The Gallardo is also much easier to drive than older Lambos, but don't think that you're gonna be bored to death. <laughs> uh, which, I mean, I don't think anybody was, but if you were, you can even get it with a gated manual transmission, which if you're trying to help save the manuals, snag one of our best-selling Ideal Ts. It would look great in your future Lambo. And that gated tranny, as far as we're concerned, is definitely the coolest spec. Oh, and remember that that V10 is sitting behind you the entire time and uh, definitely waiting for you to remind everybody who's boss. Now, a first gen Gallardo will still run 
roughly 100,000 bucks. And we know that's not really budget friendly, but you still have to consider everything that we just talked about so far. So with all that being said, the baby bowl is nothing to be messing around with because it is the real deal Lamborghini. And guess what? The next car on our list is another mid-engined monster, but from a very different breed. Smaller engine, much more sensible, and from a completely different part of the world. This, hands down, is one of the best cars to come from the 90s, and I personally have a huge crush on it. It's the Gen 1 NSX. You see, the 90s was such a great time for Japan and car manufacturers over there. And if you really think about it, the NSX just kind of seems like it was the pinnacle of all of that. It's mid-engine design in part with F1 legend Ayrton Senna, and it's as dead reliable as your grandma's Accord. And with a tuned up V6 sitting right behind the cockpit, the NSX just ticks all the right supercar boxes. Yes, it's down on power compared to the others on this list, but that doesn't make it any less of a performance monster. The styling is just pure 90s perfection. All those sharp angles and air ducts and pop-up headlights, this is just nostalgia overload. So, the NSX, it's the clear winner here, right? Well, what if I told you you could get one for around 50 or 60K? That's right, the classic NSX will run you about the same as a new BMW. So, which one would you take? Let us know in the description. A sensible sedan or the dead reliable supercar from the Far East? I think I know uh, which one I would choose. Now the NSX is arguably one of the best supercars from the 90s, but we're now gonna set our sights back on the present. Our next car comes from one of the coolest car companies in the game, the Bad Brits. I think it's pretty easy to see why Aston Martin is often considered one of the coolest car companies in the world. Their subtle styling and ability to put out amazing GT and sports cars is pretty much unparalleled. Plus there's the whole James Bond thing too, I guess. So that's why we're including the DB9 on our list. The DB series of cars has been with Aston for a long time, starting with the DB2 all the way back in the 1950s. And from then, there's been so many models that they've always been at the forefront of sports car performance and capability. The DB9, however, comes standard with a V12 engine with nearly 600 horsepower. And that's enough horsepower on tap for very smooth overtakes. And it's completely unique in the Aston Martin lineup. The previous DB7 was basically just a dressed up Jaguar. Because the best thing about the DB9 is that it combines supercar performance with luxury car necessities. You have leather seats carrying you along the road. so. It sounds like you're gonna pay a million bucks for this package, but guess what? There are some used models available right now for less than 50 big, large stacks of cash. Those are thousand dollar bills, so 50 grand. That is an utter steal for a legendary British supercar that people will always think is cool. It was an instant classic when it came out and it still has so much curb appeal. So I have to ask, another supercar, Mr. Bond? Now. I think it's time to leave the land of sensibility and luxury and hop back to insane mid-engine supercars, particularly Italian ones. Our next car is from the other famous Italian supercar maker. And what supercar list would be complete without a Ferrari? I don't know of any, because Ferraris are synonymous with supercars, as peanut butter is with jelly and, uh, I mean, apple pie is with ice cream. So. Which Ferrari makes our list? Well, let's just say that it does a full circle. Yes, 360 degrees of speed and power for you. It's the Ferrari 360. And the 360 is a full-fledged V8 mid-engine supercar that can definitely hit the high note. Plus, I'm sure there are plenty of you guys watching who have fond memories of driving the 360 in Need for Speed, so why not own the real thing? The V8 in the Prancing Horse gives you an ample 400 horsepower, so the power and performance, it's definitely there. But what about theater? Aren't supercars about making a statement? Well, the 360 is a flat plane crank V8, and playing in the revs is next level. <laughs> Yes, it is beautiful. So on our budget list, where does the Ferrari land? Unfortunately, all the performance and brand recognition is gonna cost you. The Ferrari is on the upper end at roughly 90 grand, but 
we think that the cost would be worth it to have a real Ferrari in your garage. And on the subject of pure-blooded supercars themed around animals, how would you like something a little bit more dangerous than a purebred stallion? Something venomous. The Dodge Viper is named after one of the most venomous breeds of snakes in the world. And if you're not careful, it will bite you in the ass and even kill you. So take it from me, it didn't earn that name lightly. Bruh. You see, the first Viper produced was wild, unruly maniac, and it had a V10 and no driver aids. The exhaust system running along the side was known to burn its drivers and passengers on the leg. I mean, really, the 90s were just a great time to be alive. And the Viper continued that same ideology, albeit with some logic thrown back in it, until its final production run in 2017. The legendary American supercar company has permanently cemented itself in the history books because they built one of the best supercars Ever. And guess what? Nearly every generation of Viper can be had for less than $70,000. And they all come standard with naturally aspirated V10s and a manual transmission. So one like this 2005 model is a perfect addition to anyone's budget supercar collection. Just make sure to keep the antidote somewhere close by. And yes, the Viper may be a little too much to handle for some people. Well, and if that's you, don't worry because we got you covered. Our next car is as familiar and easy to drive as a Volkswagen Beetle. In fact, people have jokingly compared the two for decades. And the Porsche 911, just the base model, is the quintessential sports car. It's pretty much the Camry of sports cars, in fact. Because, well, it's pretty much perfect in every single way and do exactly what you need it to do. So, if you want something that does it all well, get a 911. But there are some versions of the 911 that push it into supercar territory, and it's one word, turbo. And it's the Porsche that you bring if you wanna sit at the big boys table. Not only is it fully capable of holding its own against several other cars on this list, it just does everything so well, just like a base 911, which I have a ton of experience with and I absolutely love, but I'd love to have a turbo on mine. And I think the magic is the fact that it's a two plus two configuration. So you can, in theory, fit four people in it. And that's why you blast down the Autobahn well into triple digits. And the 997 generation is the perfect balance for people looking for a budget friendly turbo. The prices are just right and you get all the refinements that Porsche developed after building the, uh, dare I say, well, not ugly, ugly 996 turbo. Now, any turbo that you buy is gonna come with Porsche's signature flat six. The 997 gen has been bumped up to nearly 500 horsepower thanks to the two swirly snails bolted to the engine. Plus, the platform is just so well balanced, partially thanks to the engine sitting over the rear wheels, and it performs like a supercar should. Those reasons alone make it a clear winner and definitely an option you should be looking at. We found an 07 model for 88 grand, and we think that that's what you should get. It's really an ideal deal. And the 911, it's just like a German Swiss army knife. There's just a lot to be said for a car that can just show up and always do its job. And we're kind of running on a little bit of a sensible streak here and I kind of like it. And this next car, it's about as common, tunable, and usable as a Honda Civic. You know, if the Civic was a mid-engine supercar. The supercar Civic, what the hell do we mean by that? Well, if you think of Civic, it's literally everywhere and it's tunable to the moon and back. And everyone has their own spin on it. That's kind of like the Audi R8. Okay, yeah, so they're not exactly the same, but they kind of follow the same idea. Both are surprisingly tunable, and everybody has their own interpretation of what they can be. The Audi R8 is one of those supercars that just hits the sweet spot. It's fast, it handles great, and it can be had on a budget. The styling looks even better, and the first gen models look modern today. Plus, if you want, you can get one with a gated manual six speed. Now there's both a V8 and V10 model available, but I think you should get the V8. Not only is it less expensive, but the chassis actually handles the V8 in a six speed better than the V10. And if you want more power, slap a supercharger on it. But after driving it for a little while, I don't know if you will. And so if you're looking for a V8 six speed, you can spend less than 70 grand and get a nice example. So, you know, do yourself a favor for once and uh, go the practical route, buy an R8. That's what I would do. So that's our list of budget supercars. And we know that budget is a little bit of a loaded word here, but 
for the performance and presence you get from these cars, we gotta kinda make an exception. So, which one would you want in your ideal garage? Or are there others that we missed that you can think of? Let us know in the comments below. Also, if you're new here, my name's Brad Danger, this is Ideal, please subscribe, turn on that notification bell. If you enjoyed the vid, hit that like button. Plus, if you wanna learn how to buy your dream cars and make money enjoying them, check out the link in the description to my webinar. It's completely free and if you enjoy what you see, well, you can join the paid group. We'd love to have you in there if you're a like-minded individual like me and everybody else in there already. And if you don't wanna drive cars and make money enjoying them, well then do one thing for me, keep living the ideal lifestyle. <laughs>